Right. Christopher Lozinski here. I will be speaking about a Python taxonomy. Um, also a little bit about Poland. So what is a taxonomy? Taxonomy is the science of organizing information. I'm interested in organizing all of the Python websites. There's so many. I mean, so basically it's a tree of categories containing links to useful information. You can think of it as a taxonomy where we can talk about it. You can think of it as a JSON file where you can download it. You can think of it as a website. So here we have um, what the website looks like. You can see we're two levels deep. We're in Python links, Python software, and we can click into applications or Python frameworks or Python environment, and you can click down into the tree. Here is the markdown category. There's six major markdown libraries, plus there's one article which reviews the different ones, so they're all located in one place. So if you're interested in discovery, in discovering what the mark different markdown libraries are, this is good. It's very different from a search engine. You can grab the information as a JSON file. You'll see it has um, an ID. It's got the name, Python links. It's got a text description. It tells you what the class is, the category, and the creation time. And then it's got its children. So it's a whole JSON tree that you can grab. Uh, Creative Commons non-commercial license, help yourselves. The problem is if you search on Google on Python, you end up getting, what is it, 190 million results, and it's just a single flat list with Monty Python and snakes. It's, way, it's just way too much. There's, there needs to be some organization. If you look at the Planet Python, Python aggregators, you have, what, 820 blogs with Python. Um, it all merges it, again, into a single flat list. Maybe each one has 20 blog postings. That comes to 16,000 blog postings. It's wonderful, wonderful content, but it just isn't organized. So I want to be able to organize it as a taxonomy. When you go to Stack Overflow, how many do we have here? 811,000 postings. Again, a flat list. You go to PyPy, 117,000 Python packages. I believe the next one is GitHub, 364,000. Just these enormous lists, right? So once you have a taxonomy that everybody agrees on, it's very easy to, for somebody to put the name of the taxonomy as the um, category. Um, and once you can do that, you can import it all, and you can structure, and you can organize all these 16,000 blog postings according to a single tree, according to a single taxonomy. Um, and so keywords, so taxonomy is very different from keywords. So here we have an article. Wesley Chun is a famous author of a book, and he now works for Google as an evangelist. And so he wrote an article on modifying events with Google Calendar API. Where does that show up in a taxonomy? Well, if you look at the tree, it shows up under Python links, Python software, Python libraries, Python internet libraries, remote server libraries, third-party APIs, Google APIs, Google Calendar API. So it's a, it's, it goes about 10 levels deep, the tree. And compare that. So here's the name of the category, Google Calendar APIs. And then you compare it to all the keywords that he put in there. What? A calendar API, command line, Google APIs, Google APIs, client libraries. Just using a taxonomy, it's much clearer where it belongs, much easier to find it, and much easier to find other articles that are, related, that are very closely related in the same category. Oops, sorry. What happened here? Not one. Okay, so that's the first part on the Google tech on the taxonomy. Any questions about it? Sure. Two questions. All right, I like this. Half the people are asking questions. This is great. Not quite. <laughs> Go ahead and back. Do I find the same resource on? Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's an excellent question. Say you have a topic. Um, that could be on two different branches, right? So uh, the first thing, um, so the question is, is it a graph or is it a tree? And so right now it's a tree, and so you're perfectly able to do the same link from two different places, right? From um, maybe under Python 2 and maybe under Google APIs or maybe under uh, Python calendar software and Google software. They could be under two locations. But right now it's a tree, so you can just treat those as separately. The underlying software is ZODB, and ZODB actually supports a graph database. So sometime in the future when it becomes important, I'll, I'll, I'll treat it as a proper graph. Right now you just add two links to two separate branches of the tree. Excellent questions. The Python guys, I'll understand this right away. Did you have the same question? Yeah. Okay. 
you guys are. Pardon, go ahead. Uh, do you treat the, uh, the quality of the resources in some way? Yeah, it's a great question. So on Reddit, people upvote resources, right? And so here the other principle is we keep the number of items to about seven. Are you, in human factors, you don't have more than seven items in every category. So, you know, if it's only seven and it's all on your topic, you probably want to check them all out. I mean, at some point in the future we can do voting, but it's, it's, not, um, it's not like Reddit where you get tons of spam and stuff. The idea is to sort of get rid of the spam. And also, if you do a blog and you have a bad posting, I'm likely to unlink to all of your blog postings, right? So I trust that people have the right categories, they'll put them in the right place, but you, you do it wrong once and, I'll, and there's a whole model of all of your contributions and where they link to. So if some of your contributions are spammy, then they'll all get deleted. Any other questions? Go ahead. I didn't get if it's a curated list or like the taxonomy is it manually conceived? Yeah, so actually it's not only me. What I do is there are many of these curated lists. I import them and I merge them all. And so you may know Awesome Python, Awesome Django, the Awesome Flask, so, so I bring them in. So there's, there's literally, there's over a thousand curators curating all this manually. And what I'm doing is turning it into a proper tree. Those, the Awesome Python, it's only like a two or three, maybe a four level tree at most, really a three level tree. And so what I do is I stretch it out and make it into a proper tree. They have too many in each category, so I have to cut and paste. So it's, it's yeah, so absolutely the whole idea is to, a taxonomy has to be curated and I wanna have big arguments in society over whether this is this category or that category. If we want to organize it, we should be discussing how to organize information. That's, that's what we should be doing, not you know, spending ages searching up for stuff. Okay, any other questions? Um, okay, so let me move on to the next section. So before I understood it was a taxonomy, people weren't that interested in it. And so I did another section which was about companies. And so um, this is, again, it's a tree, it's on top of the ZODB, it's a hierarchical database. And this is a more sophisticated data structure. So here at the top we have a regular category called the world. Underneath that we have a class called regions and we're going to look at Europe. Underneath that we have a class called countries. We're going to look at Poland. There's a section for France also. Underneath that we have a class called cities. We're going to look at Katowice. Under that we have a class called companies. We're going to look at my company, Bloggery. And under that there are various things for products, for jobs, for reviews, uh, YouTube videos. So there are all kinds of different classes that you can add that they all behave slightly differently, but you have a rich, complicated structure. So what does this look like? Well, here's the table of companies for France. You can click into the city and see the companies in that city. You can click into the company and see more information about that company. And on the right, um, in Poland there's a lot of outsourcing, so if they're looking for a company with a particular skill set, they can just go and find out who specializes, like who's the one company in Poland who only does Python. They can go through the list and see it. You can click into a city, here's actually for Warsaw, it's a bit better developed than, than the one for Paris. And here's the row for NVIDIA, which is the, the big heavyweight in deep learning. They make the chips for, for, for NVIDIA. And you have a column on jobs and their career page, and you have a column about their products, and you have a column about all kinds of links. The interesting ones are Indeed and Glassdoor, because they do reviews of what it's like to work at these companies. And sometimes those reviews are negative. So if you just go to the company website, all their links are going to say great things. But if you come to the directory, you may get links of people who have different opinions about the company. So it makes it much more. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, just, uh, where does the data come from? So it's all hand curated, okay. right? And, um, you know, the big companies, they have the stuff of you know, everything has to be automated. And you can't classify stuff. Computers, artificial intelligence, they can, maybe they can classify a cat from a dog. But in terms of classifying all these abstract concepts of Python, it has to be done by hand. Yeah, so um, GitHub has a model of pull requests, and what that assumes is that anybody can write anywhere on the code. And so I have a model where people contribute links, and they're responsible for the links. So it's a different security model, much more partitioned, and I think much more appropriate for this model. I'm, I'm actually going to, I'm about to push out the JSON file out to GitHub so people can read it from there. But the, this is, think of Plone, it's really a content management system, and then you have you, that whole concept of content, as opposed to GitHub pull requests. And so as a content management system, it's got the whole um, uh, editorial review cycle. So you can post something, and I, 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 five or six times I've gotten spam, and it, it doesn't appear until 
until I approve it. So there's an approval cycle. And people can get promoted to be approvers and stuff like that. So here's the record for a particular company, um, Untitled Kingdom. They have products, but they also have links. So we have reviews, we have a link to their blog, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Crunch, Crunchbase, GitHub, because the information about a company is no longer on a single website. It's out all over the web. And if your company's not here, I invite you to add it. And if your company is here, I invite you to add all the links for your company. Let's see, what do we have here? Da, 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 da. Uh, here's the NVIDIA page, so you not only see the links, but you see a little bit more about what each link says. So you can click into it and see, get more information. And um, so I have two products. First, I did Privacy CV, where you control who has access to your professional information. Nobody was interested in that, so I did these directories. People really like the directories, so now I'm starting to create these, these, uh, the directories of Python developers by city, by country. Um, and the, the idea is that a lot of people have the word Python resume in their resume. A lot of companies have the word Python in their job, but there's a class of companies who are really primarily Python companies and the class of people who are really primarily Python developers. And I, I want to make, just reduce the noise and just get links to all of those. And you can control who has access to the details of your information. Um, I invite you to test drive it. It's been in production for, I don't know, quite a while now. It's really fast. I download the JSON data, um, then the queries are done in JavaScript. It's all on behind Nginx servers, so it scales. It's on Linode servers, so it scales up and down. It's all in Python, uh, ZODB, and FancyTree. How does it differ from the job aggregators? Well, you know, these big venture capitalist-driven companies, they're all into, you know, computer automated stuff. And I believe this stuff has to be curated, particularly the tree of, of Python categories. It takes professional software developers who understand the concepts to be able to figure out which two things are similar and which are different. So it's manually done. And so they only take active jobs. It's something like Indeed or Glassdoor. They'll only have active jobs. Well, I'll list all companies. So even if a company, they've never hired anybody, but they have an interesting product and they work in Toulouse, well, you want to know about them. You want to know who's doing what in your city. So you want to list that company, list the link to their products. Um, they will only take from paid job boards because they want to reduce from spam. But because it's all curated, I'm happy to take from, actually, I got the list of all the jobs that there. I'll add those in, too. I'm happy to take lists from anywhere. Um, they only list jobs, whereas this lists companies, products, jobs, and links. They have no technical content, whereas this was first, Python links was first and foremost a Python directory and a Python taxonomy. It's all part of the same tree. They will allow, allow multiple listings for each company, which is kind of, because they're all kind of the same job. You really want to just see a list of the companies, and only if you click into that company can you see the list of the jobs. I think that's much better. And they'll have to often have, particularly in the US, companies which are hidden by the recruiters, which developers don't like. So here we have no anonymous postings. You can see who the companies are. Um, OK, so that's the section on companies. I'll speak some on Poland. Any questions about, about this? Please go ahead. You guys are a great audience. Uh, what about the, the what's the legal status of the data? Is it privileged? It's, it's a great question. So the data that I import generally comes in under, um, you, you can check the different things. Um, actually, I link to, the, to them. The, it generally comes in under uh, Creative Commons public domain, which rolls over to something else if public domain isn't allowed in your country. And I release this under Creative Commons non-commercial. Free, help yourself, please, you know. Um, and the point is the world needs to standardize on a taxonomy for Python. The world needs this. We need to organize all these huge numbers of sites. It's ridiculous. Any other questions on the companies? Okay, let's move on to the Poland. So people don't know how wonderful Poland is. So in Poland, all the prices are like, because Poland is in the Euros, in the EU, but it's not in the Eurozone. And so everything, you know, in the euro is like artificially high and it's kind of killing the economies of Spain and Italy, certainly maybe France too. And so Poland, everything is one quarter the price and the salaries are maybe half of what they are here. So basically, if you go to Poland, you're twice as wealthy as you are in France. In big cities, there's a lot of English. So anyhow, Poland is just wonderful. I'm so happy with it. Um, I've got a map. I've got another directory called Poland Trade Info and I've got a map of like all the different cities and you can click into the city and it's the same thing. It's a directory of information about Poland. And of course, for us, the important thing is where are the conferences? 
So I don't know how many people were at this conference, but at the Polish Python conference, they had about 350 developers this year, and it was a paid conference. You had to pay to attend. And so here, France has 60 million people, Poland had 40 million people, but there's sort of way more active, and there's a huge number of technical conferences. All the big technical conferences are in English. If you go to a smaller user group, sometimes they're in English, sometimes they're in Polish, but if you just ask them, they're very happy to speak in English. Um, and so the big ones are Krakow, Warsaw, and Wrocław. Wrocław is a lovely city. Here are the overnight trains. In Germany, they've closed down the overnight trains. In France, they don't have many overnight trains. I, have, I often go to Python conferences all over the place. I take the overnight train. I get there in the morning, well rested. Life is great. Really enjoy it. I haven't been to Russia yet. I got an apartment there uh, right in the center of town, five minutes to the bus station, 10 minutes to the train station. It was only uh, 1,100 euros per square meter. Um, and really solid construction. It's the most solidly built building I've ever seen in my life because the communists built it. And let's see, what was the other point? Um, oh, and it wasn't just like four walls, but the whole thing was complete custom cabinetry built to fit the different corners just perfectly. And it had towels and sheets and coffee and tea and pots and pans. It was like turnkey, just move in, bring our suitcase. Really nice. And they're in Katowice in particular, there are huge numbers of language groups. So on Tuesday, I go speak French. On Wednesday, um, I speak French and Japanese. On Thursday, I speak English and Spanish. There's just lo a whole bunch of language groups for like the eight or 10 major languages. Um, and tons of great companies. For example, Amazon Alexa, her, her give me, that's my 18 minute warning. Um, Amazon Alexa, her voice is actually from a Polish company, Ivona, that was bought by Amazon. Live chat, that's the little text, text window that pops up in the lower right-hand corner of your browser, and the operator says, hello, can I help you? Well, that's a Polish company. Um, Witcher, people know, Brainly, Brand24. Um, CK Editor is the leading um, JavaScript, browser-based JavaScript. Um, it's an HTML, WYSIWYG HTML editor, which you include for free in your software. And of course, everyone knows Estimote beacons. And a lot of uh, deep learning stuff there. So there are other companies doing these directories. Uh, Zeef is the big one. Um, they, both Zeef and GLX, have had 2.7 million euros or millions of dollars of investment. I did this application for 1 20th of the price, probably because I use ZODB and it just naturally supports a tree. And Zeef really only has a three-level directory. So they have like five or six different Python curators with five or six different directories. And each one is only two levels, so maybe they get 20 categories and 10 categories, you know, 10 in each category. It's kind of a disaster. You want to have seven in each item and go much deeper. Um, and then, there, so there's a Poland trade directory and there's a Python links directory and there are different groups that are interested in different branches of the tree. And in particular, the, uh, a lot of the Python user groups are quite interested in getting my tree of city uh, companies in their city on their website. So if anyone here is involved with any of the French Python user groups and you'd like to um, get it on your website, um, we can, it's JavaScript and JSON, so it's very easy to do. So I'm very happy to be in Poland, kind of embarrassed about what's going on in America right now. The world needs a directory. If you want to contact me, pythonlinks.info. I've got some business cards here. Click on contact. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Go ahead. I'm a recruiter. So the problem is the world, the recruiters spam the world. And so in order to develop good relationships with developers, what you need to do is provide them with good information. And so I'm invited to speak at technical conferences. People invite me back. I get people's respect. You know, I can talk to them. I know what's what and what kind of jobs they like. And, you know, I, I, okay, do you like this? And so it works very nicely. Go ahead. Uh, I find it very interesting your idea of presenting in the global formation. I guess there are a lot of some legal stuff here behind you. But uh, I thought maybe it would be interesting also to have a, maybe a feature to suggest um, speakers to conference. Like you want to create a conference in a city. Maybe your data can help you know, gather people that could be interested in speaking there. 
So that's a really good idea. Um, when I was in Czech, they actually had a list of all the companies. And one of the things they do want to do for a conference is you want the list of companies so that when you're having a conference, you can ask for funding, right? But also, um, so in my private CV, I have people and I have, um, I don't yet have actually a tree of cities, but pretty soon I will. And I'll have not only the tree of the, where the person lives in the tree of cities, geographical tree of cities, but also where they're willing to, to work. So it would be very, I would be very happy to help conferences organize who they should invite, right? And, and I guess the deeper idea is that right now we have like all these websites that do different things, but once you have a shared data model, you can actually do different applications off of it, right? So, so yeah, <laughs> clearly, good idea. Okay. Another question. Thank you. Thank you for saving me with the computer.